Got any idea where I should put this? <laughs> no, over there. It'll do for now. Right. Oh. Well, I don't know about you. I've had about enough for tonight. Mind if I make a move? No, you get off. We'll get the second car in tomorrow morning. We'll sort out the point of sale stuff when the others are here. Listen, this time, tomorrow night, we're going to be in the thick of it. How many do you reckon to turn up? 200, 250? Oh, that with a bit of luck. We sent out twice as many invitations as last time. You staying on, then? Yeah, just for a bit. Knock off the main lights when you go. I'll see you tomorrow. OK. Good night. Montego. Oh, Montego Bay. Good evening. Sorry. I was miles away. Yes, I know. It's quite a place, isn't it? it where? Montego Bay. Where else? Mm. Uh, my name's Mike Barnes. What can I do to help you, It's Mr. really more a question of what I can do to help you. Actually, it is late and we are closed. Normally, we're all gone by this yes, time. Yes, you've got a launch party tomorrow night. Yes, I know. Y yes, well, if you'd like an invitation, I can give you one now, but... Tomorrow's a bit difficult. Is that the car there? Yes. Well, one of them. Anyway, if you'd like to follow me, no I... No chance of a quick look. Oh, I'm sorry. Completely out of the question. If you'd like to pop along some other time, I'm gladly show you around, give you a test drive if you like, but tonight that's all you're going to see. How did you do that? Now, that is a very good-looking piece of motor car, don't you think? Super. H how did you do that? Well, aren't you going to tell me something about it? Yes. Well, it's a, a four-door four saloon, front-wheel drive, plenty of room inside, well-equipped, economical. Price-wise, it's very competitive. Good performance? Yes, very. I can't remember the actual figures. How about fuel consumption? Th that's pretty good, too. And what's the boot size? Uh, I can't remember exactly. Uh, it's very big. Hmm. You know, for a salesman, you're not exactly full of information, are you? Yes, uh, the cars only came in this morning. What about the Product Insight book on your desk? Read it? Uh, uh, not from cover to cover, no. Uh, we've been a bit busy, you see, sending out invitations and all that. I was about to when you turned up. Uh, I've only flipped through it so far. You're leaving it a bit late, aren't you? From the moment the first people walk through that door tomorrow night, you ought to be clued up and ready to go. Yes, well, the launch party's only a bit of a knees up, really. I mean, providing they get a drink and a chance to look at the car, that's all they're after. I can cope with that. All right, prove it. Here's the Product Insight book. You can do the program test. Won't take a couple of minutes. We'll see how you get on and take it from there. Twenty-two percent. Not so hot. Well, like I said, I've been up to my eyes. Still, I take your point. Good. I mean, it does make sense, doesn't it? If people are interested enough to come and see the car tomorrow night, they're obviously prepared to consider buying one. So the sooner you know Montego inside out, the sooner you can start selling. And the sooner I get into that book, the better, hmm? Look, just this once, I'll help you out. Hold this for a moment. 
uh, both hands. Right, let's see if that worked. What are the three major benefits of brakeless ignition? Better fuel economy, far more consistent performance and a much longer life. What models in the range have the split rear seat? HL and above. Good. Where is the switch that disconnects the boot lock from the remote release system? In the boot itself, for security. Hey, that's fantastic. True. It's just a pity you didn't learn it for yourself. Right, let's get on. You know the car now. What about your customers? Oh, no problem. Well, let's see, shall we? How did you do that? It's really quite easy. Oh, dear. Excuse me. That's better. Now then, ten people picked to represent potential Montego users. Which ones could be your customers? Well, four are bound to be private owners, so they definitely count. Agreed. Go on. All the rest are business car users, uh, except those three who you can add to the private owners. Now, why is that? A choice. About half of all business car users can pick what car they drive. I mean, OK, they may have to choose from an approved list or within a price bracket, but they certainly don't get lumbered with any make of car, whether they like it or not. Like uh, those three. No, they're our fleet sales manager's responsibility. Very good. Oh, thank you. Very good. <laughs> so just as a matter of interest, what is your definition of a business user? Well, someone who drives a car provided by the company they work for. They don't actually pay for the car themselves. And? Well, someone who's self-employed, who can offset the cost of the car against the business, like an accountant. Surely you know this. True. But from your point of view, it means the vast majority of people who could end up behind a Montego steering wheel are customers who choose their cars through local dealers. And that can't be bad, can it? Mm, I wish I could be so sure. Look, as far as the usual retail customers are concerned, no bother. I know what I'm doing. I mean, some of my customers will move over to Montego from their current car. It always happens. And I know, with a car as good as Montego, that I can pull in more than my fair share of new private business. Well, I did it with the Acclaim, Metro, and the Maestro. <clears throat> it's this lot that worries me. Oh, how come? Well, it's like this. The only real experience we've had selling to business users is with Metro, Acclaim, and Maestro. We've done really well. I've sold the occasional ambassador or ital to local companies too, but we haven't had the right car to compete seriously in this league for ages. We've got some contacts, but they're a bit thin on the ground. You see, we're all more or less starting from scratch. Presumably by getting together a list of prospects. Not a massive list, no. We had a few business users on our Superlink file, and we've added some more of the obvious local companies too. But that's about all. Well, Superlink won't exist on fresh air, you know. You've got to feed it the information it needs. Mm. Names and addresses of genuine targets. A bit late now. Who told you that? It's never too late. Mm. Prospecting's a long-term process, you know that. But the sooner you start getting the names and addresses of those business users on file, the sooner you'll start banking those company checks. I'll drink to that. Where do we start? You've got to get yourselves organised. Put a positive plan together you can all follow. Uh, you didn't answer the question. All right, I'll give you an example of what I mean. What's the single most significant feature about the car? It's got a boot. Right, and what's the most obvious benefit of a car boot? Security. Right, so ask yourself which local business people are most likely to need that kind of security. I'll give you a lead. Doctors and vets because they carry drugs. Reps with pharmaceutical companies and wholesale chemists for the same reason. People who regularly carry expensive equipment or samples around on business. Jewelry manufacturers and wholesalers. Mini computer retailers, antique dealers, telecommunication equipment suppliers, office equipment suppliers, security equipment suppliers. Photographers. Photographers, photographic suppliers, and that's just one possible lead. They must be getting on for a couple of hundred names and addresses of local business users in that category alone. If you and your people put their minds to it, you can soon have every worthwhile business user down on file but you've got to plan how you're going to do it and stick to it. Right. Yes, fine. That seems a realistic enough plan. Just make sure you follow it through, that's all. Right. 
Well, where do we go from here? That's pretty obvious. You know the car, you now know the types of customers you're going to have to sell it to. What you've got to sort out now is what these people are likely to be looking for in a car like Montego. You mean things like reliability and so on? Well, that's easy as far as the private customer's concerned. Anything to do with cost. First, price, fuel consumption, service requirements, oh, and of course, reliability. Then they're after a car that performs well. Uh, rolled holding, acceleration, and so on. Then after that, comfort, equipment, quietness. Yes, you've got it. Speaking generally, those are the kind of things private customers are looking for. And they usually always have something to do with cost. That's normal, because they're paying for it themselves. Now then, what about the business user? Well, I should imagine reliability is top of the list. Aha! Uh -huh. Why? Uh, for the same reason as the private customer. Mm, no, not exactly. Look, I think it would be best if we get the information straight from the horse's mouth. Now then. What the...? Don't worry. We won't keep you a moment or two. What's your name? Alan Davidson. And what do you do? Well, I work for a firm of chartered surveyors. Why? And you have a company car which you could choose for yourself up to a price ceiling. Good. What were the things you were really looking for in a car that you needed, in some kind of priority? Um... Well, I spend a hell of a lot of time out of the office, you know, visiting different sites, and, well, if the car kept playing up, I just couldn't get the job done. No way. At best, it would make it a damn sight more difficult. So what you're saying is you needed a car that wouldn't let you down? Yeah. You see, as far as he's concerned, poor reliability is not simply a question of cost. It's the sheer inconvenience and the effect on his job that really counts. What else were you after? Well, what I didn't want was a boring car. I mean, if you've got to use a car for business, you may as well get some fun out of it. If a car sticks to the road and gets a move on, you can relax and enjoy it a bit. Hmm. What next? It had to be economical on fuel, mm -hmm. definitely. I mean, OK, so the company picks up the petrol bills when I'm on business, and naturally they want to keep the costs down, but well, the other thing is that I, I use the car myself on holidays and at weekends, and I don't want to have to pay through the nose either. Go on. Next, I wanted a quiet, comfortable car. I mean, apart from the fact that I need quite a bit of legroom for myself, and I've often got a couple of clients in the back, uh, well, I use the car so much that it becomes like an extension of the office. I mean, who, who wants to work in a noisy, uncomfortable office? I mean, in some cars, you arrive at the site and you're bushed before you've even started the real job, especially on a long trip. That'll do. Thanks for your time. Well... They don't seem much different from a retail customer's priorities, from what I can see. Ah, but the reason why he's chosen them are completely different, and that means you've got to sell the car differently as well. For example, to the private motorist, fuel economy is mainly a matter of cost, a vital point for you to make. But fuel economy also means more miles to the tank full. Now, for the business motorist, that means no wasted time always spent filling up. That means no worries about finding a petrol station that will take your credit card, or whether you've got enough petty cash on you, or whether you're going to get stranded on the way to an important meeting. You see, the car's the same. The way you sell it is different. Right. We'll see. There's the list. What are the Montego features you would use to convince a local business user that it will satisfy those needs? Well, roll on tomorrow night. That's all I can say. Got you going, has it? You bet. You know, the more you look at the Montego, the more you realise just how good a car it really is. Ah, I know that, and you know that. But what about the people already driving other cars? What do you mean? I mean the competition. Ford and Vauxhall owners for a start. Almost two out of every three Montego sales you make will have to be to people like that. They're the ones you'd have to convince that the car is as good as it really is. Shouldn't be that difficult. No. All you've got to do is know the main strengths and weaknesses of the cars you're up against. What are the features a Vauxhall salesman uses to sell a Cavalier? What are the things Sierra owners like about their cars? Know those things and you can soon get your own arguments together in advance. Never knock the competition, golden rule. I'm not suggesting you knock the competition. Far from it. But there's nothing wrong in making an honest comparison, is there? And proving your car is the much better buy. Look. I'll show you exactly what I mean. Uh, no, 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 pl please. Uh, not again. Uh, really, you're, you're disturbing relax, a lot. Lo relax. <laughs> Won't take a minute. <clears throat>
You're going to get me shot. Now relax, it won't take long. This is the Cavalier GLS, so it's Vauxhall's equivalent of the Montego HLS. <clears throat> now, the Cavalier is not a bad car. Just listen. The Cavalier, Mr. Evans, is a car that really brings out the driver in you. This is the impeccably styled GLS, and it can carry five people and all their luggage in outstanding luxury and comfort at impressive speed over long distances. The heart of the Cavalier GLS is the very advanced 1600cc engine driving the front wheels. It's very reliable and powerful, completely outclassing many larger cars with its responsive performance and exceptional fuel economy. In fact, at a steady 56 miles an hour, you can expect to get nearly 50 miles to the gallon. Nought to 60 in only 10.8 seconds. Really quite staggering. As far as the boot area is concerned, the Cavalier completely outstrips the competition with a massive 18 cubic feet of space to take all the luggage you're ever likely to carry. It's easy to load, there's a remote release, and the spare wheel is easily accessible. One of the things you can't help noticing about the Cavalier is the spaciousness and refinement of the interior. The whole concept of the inside of the car is to provide a roomy and comfortable passenger environment. There's nothing to touch it in its class. For the driver, the Cavalier is incomparable. The legroom is particularly generous, as you can see, and the car is quite exceptionally well equipped. Notice the stereo radio cassette player as standard. And for additional comfort, there's a very sophisticated heating ventilation system so that you can actually channel cold air onto the face and warm air onto the feet at the same time. All in all, Mr Evans, the Cavalier is a really brilliant motor car. Frankly, you won't find another car in the same class to beat it. Hmm. I don't think much of his sales technique. But at least you can see what Vauxhall reckon are the most important points about the car. Styling, performance, fuel economy, space, luxury and so on. Now, supposing you were selling Montego to an existing Cavalier owner, what information would you use to convince him that your car is better? You know, when you get down and analyse it, there really is no comparison. Oh, I don't think I'd go that far. But in every key area, Montega comes out on top. Yeah. Add it together, and you can prove to your customer that he's getting a lot of car for his money. I tell you what, we'll have a competition. Right, stand by your cars. Now then, ignoring the features both cars have in common, I want you to list those advantages each model has over the other. On your marks, get set, go. Alloy wheels, electrically operated front windows, sunroof, central door locking, 0 to 60 in 10.8, 9.8. Boot, 18 cubic feet, 18.4. Total legroom, 74.3 inches, 78.6 inches. Electrically operated and heated door mirrors. <laughs> Variable delay intermittent wipes, split folding rear seat, rear seat headrests, and a rear centre armrest. Um, under bonnet lamp. Courtesy light delay. Remote release fuel filler flap. Hmm? Um, pass. Illuminated column stalks. Rear compartment heating. Programmed uh, ignition. Pass. TD wheels and tyres. Uh, hmm? uh, hmm? Electronic. All right, all right, don't rub it in. Good, eh? The customer's yours. And that's against the car that's generally acknowledged to have the best feature range in its class. Until now. OK, but shouldn't we be concentrating on the Sierra? I mean, it's got the biggest chunk of the business user market by a mile. Let's have a look at it then, shall we? Now then, the 1.6L is the volume seller in the Sierra range, so it'll be up against the Montego 1.6L. We'll have a change this time. The people you're going to have to convince will be Sierra customers, so you might as well start now. Hey, hang on a minute. He's one of my customers. I sold him in Ital a few years back. And did you keep in touch? No, not really, no. 
Well, then. Now, sir, perhaps you'd be good enough to tell us why you bought a Sierra and why you like it. Well, I wanted the car for business, mainly. Something comfortable, not too expensive, and cheap to run. Sierra fitted the bill on all three, and it's reliable and all. Now, the fuel economy with this engine's magic. I suppose I must be getting something over 30 to the gallon, and on top of that, it's dead nippy. Service-wise, it's cheap enough, and considering I'm doing over 20,000 a year, well, I've only had the odd bit of bother mechanically. Well, this is what I really like, mind you. Plenty of carrying space. Not that I use it much with the seats down. Most of the time, I can cope as it is. From passenger point of view, there's plenty of room in back. Now, that's important, because we've got two kids and the wife's mother in tow a lot of the time. Apart from that, it's nicely done out, with a fair bit of storage space, which is handy. Now, I'm a big chap, and I like my comfort when I'm driving. Plenty leg room. Sierra's good with that. Seat's comfortable and all. Head restraint, the works. Instruments are clear, plenty of them. Great visibility when you're really motoring. Now, for my money, it's a damn good car. I'm out to touch it, so I'll probably get another when I'm done with this one. Well, he certainly seems to be keen, all right. No doubt about it. But those are the kind of people you're going to have to sell to. It's a tough old world out there. Anyway... You know what he likes about the car. Go through the list and see how Montego compares. Yes, well, I'm satisfied. There's no comparison at all, really. I mean, they're both definitely good cars, but in lots of ways, Montego's still got the edge. Well, don't tell me. Tell him. Hey! Hang about! You know, sometimes you can really go too far. Uh, sorry about that, Mr Hardwick. Uh, could you spare me a few seconds? Well, I suppose so. Hey! That looks a bit of all right. Oh, it not only looks good, Montego is good, and I'll prove it. Now, you said you were looking for a car that was cheap to run. Well, this Montego has a new S-series power unit with all the advantages of an electronic engine management system and programmed ignition. Now, that not only keeps the engine running at peak efficiency, but with the five-speed gearbox, that's standard on this car, at a steady 56, you'll be getting 53 miles to the gallon. Now, that's eight miles to the gallon better than your Sierra. Interesting. Not only that, Montego's quicker. Not to 60 in 10.9 seconds. Now, that's over two seconds quicker than your Sierra. Well, like I said, I like to put my foot down now and again. Uh, and it needs less servicing. Only once every 12,000 miles. So, you'll be saving money there, too. You've done your own work, lad. <laughs> now, you mentioned reliability. Well, these days, Austin Rover cars have quality and reliability designed in from the beginning. And there's a six-year corrosion warranty on the body. That's something Ford don't offer. So, you can expect a good second-hand price on the Montego when you come to change it. All helps. Ah, and this boot, you're really going to like. At 18.4 cubic feet, it'll swallow what your Sierra can hold, even with the family on board. And as far as your business samples are concerned, it's much easier to load. And the sill is five inches lower than your Sierra. And it's very secure. Out of sight, out of mind. Uh, compared with the Sierra, Montego has more space for the family, more legroom, and therefore more comfort on long journeys. Oh, and for the mother-in-law, you've got the benefit of uh, rear compartment heating to uh, send her to sleep. I say there's plenty of legroom, more than my car. Yes, I thought you'd like that. You know, it makes a big difference the amount of time you spend in the car. And they've added some nice touches, too, to make driving more comfortable, like uh, height-adjustable seatbelts. Well, that's clever. And on top of all that, Around 40,000 miles, Montego will save you a lot of money. Around 370 pounds less to run than your Sierra. You are? 370 quid? That's worth thinking about. When can I have a test drive? Any time you like, Mr Hardwick. How about Thursday afternoon? You're on. You see, providing you get your act together and present the features properly, Montego can easily win you back that lost customer. Car for car, he'd be mad to choose another Sierra, particularly once he's got a chance to get the feel of the car on the test drive. Right. Well, where do we go from here? You mean, where do you go from here? Montego represents the best opportunity Austin Rover salesmen have had to cash in for years. Financially, you could do very well if you play your cards right. 
that dream holiday in Montego Bay could be more than just a fantasy. Oh, yes. I never thought of it like that. Oh, why not? Decide how many Montegas you've got to sell and go after it. You should always set yourself a proper sales target anyway. And don't cheat. Don't rely on converting existing clients. Make sure they're conquest sales. Well, that means I'm going to have to chase a good few prospects. Then do it. You should have a pretty good idea of what your success rate is, so it'll be easy to work out the number of people you've got to keep the pressure on. And for heaven's sake, be businesslike when you're dealing with business people. Well, I've always done proper cost comparisons with their current cars, if that's what you're talking about. Put it on paper. Business people like that. The only thing I'm worried about is... I I remember reading somewhere that one of the strongest reasons these sort of customers buy a particular car is because it's the same as the one they're driving. They don't like change very much. Well, how do you get around that one? Get them behind the wheel. Push the test drive. It's vital. Well, you know, you've been a great help. Why don't you drop in again sometime? Well, who knows? This time next year we might meet up in the Caribbean. Remember, it all depends on you in the end. Yeah. Just imagine, hot sun, white sand, rum punches, topless by day, legless by night. Better than Bournemouth. Me and my Abby likes Bournemouth. Oh, hello, Mrs Ogden. You're working late, dear? Yes. Well, I've got a lot to catch up on. should have given the maestro a good start in life. As far as I can see, it's not a question of where did we go wrong. It's more like where did we go right. And where is Mike, by the way? He gave one of the promotion girls a lift home last night, I think. The big redhead? I think so. Oh, that figures. He spent half the evening chatting her up. I only saw him talk to two other people, and they were customers' wives, come to think of it. Yeah, well, we weren't exactly rushed off our feet, were we? A lot less people turned up than we thought. Quite. But the invitations were sent out in good time. What happened to all the chasing up that you lot were supposed to be doing on the phone? It's a good job that you were around. Otherwise, there would have been so much drink left over, we could have floated a battleship. I don't know. The most important launch we've had for ages, and it turns out to be a real cock-up. The vicar enjoyed it. Oh, yes, the vicar. What about him? Was he supposed to be the local opinion former or a standing for the celebrity? I couldn't make up my mind. Well, it is the miracle maestro. <gasps> Very amusing. Look, in future, we will check that the real launch celebrity is not swanning around in hospital without his appendix. That could happen to anybody. He'd been there for five days. We should have checked. I'm sorry about the videotape, Tom. Oh, that's all right, we've been through that. But in future, if you must take the point-of-sale tape home to show the missus, just make sure you bring the same one back. If customers had wanted to see an episode of Dallas, they'd have stayed at home. We should have checked it. Of course we should have checked it. We should have checked everything, but we didn't. And the showroom looked a dog's dinner. Didn't allow enough time to get the merchandising right. And you looked a dog's dinner. Didn't allow enough time to get home and change. The presentation wasn't so hot either. All right, I should have rehearsed. I just didn't have enough time. Didn't allow enough time. The point is, what have we got to show for it all? Has anybody got any sales leads? Any sales? I got rid of a metro. You did? Oh, my 
God, I bet even now the phone lines are buzzing from Harold Musgrove's office. Put the Longbridge lads on extra overtime. Step up production. Les Smiley's done it again. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> I mean the HLE on the used car list. Terrific. Has anybody else done anything good? Three probables, a few possibles. And you? Uh, about the same. But I've uh, lost my list. Find it. We've um, got a few test drive bookings. A few's right. I've seen more names on some gravestones. And who is Doris Davenport? The big redhead. Oh, she sounds like a real new car prospect, that one. If she plays her cards right, I dare say Mike will end up giving her one. I dare say he already has. Hmm. Right. What is the verdict, then, on the launch of a lifetime? Virtually a disaster. One used metro sold. A few probables, a few possibles. Double that if Tony gets his eyesight back and finds his list. And a few test drive bookings. We'd have done better setting fire to the cars and collecting the insurance money. It's just not good enough. Next time, we've got to be organised. 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 Next time, we've got to be...